Hello and welcome to the new series of Drishti IAS. I am Pooja Devedi and in this segment today, we are going to discuss about Indian Vessels Bill of 2021. This topic is important from the perspective of prelims and also from the perspective of GS mains paper. So let's begin with the topics of discussion that we are going to look at. These are the topics that we are going to discuss gradually starting with the news. So the parliament has last week passed a law that will put a standard in place to regulate inland waterways. This new bill by the name of Indian Vessels Bill 2021 will replace the Indian Vessels Act of 1917 and the Act of 1917 was pretty restrictive in nature. It did not set a proper standard, it did not have any sort of regulation on a larger scale and that is why to overcome those drawbacks and to also supplement the freight burden in the roadways and the railways, this bill has come into place. So this is what we are going to discuss. Let's first look at the in inland waterways. If we talk about the inland waterways, in 2016, the National Waterways Act, it was passed and 111 national waterways were declared as 111 bodies were declared as national waterways of this only 13 are operative in nature right now if we talk about the national waterway one which works through the ganga hugli river system and it joins prayagraj to haldia this is the largest waterway and largest operation waterway of 1620 kilometer so if we talk about the facts related to waterways let's have a look at them if we talk about the cargo, 55 million tons of cargo moves across the inland waters of India and also passenger count is significant. And currently it is restricted to very few stretches. We have already discussed about the Ganga Hugli river system, also Brahmaputra and Barak river system is operational in the northeast, the backwaters of Kerala and the inland waterways of Mumbai is also in place but there are so many waterways that are not utilized being utilized to their full capacity and also country boats of various capacities do operate in the region which do not come into the records as the last act if we talk about it did not include a lot of waterways and now this particular bill will put that in check and Inland waterways transport has the potential to supplement the overburdened railway and roadway transport and also inland waterway transport is much more according to a study it has proven to be more economic as well as environment friendly. Moving on, if we talk about the Inland Waterways Authority of India, this regulates the inland waterways of India and it tries and strives to achieve perfection when it comes to the development of inland waterways to regulate its, its safety as well. It came into existence on 27th of October 1986, works under the Ministry of Shipping, okay, remember that. And it is working with the assistance from World Bank in order to have an achievement through the Jal Mark Vikas program. Okay, so this Inland Waterways Authority of India is headquartered at Noida. Okay, moving on, let's talk about the Indian Vessels Bills, the key features of it. So, key features is that unified law is provided through this act for the entire country. A centralized data base will be formed for which every vessel the vessel transport system, the crew on the ship, the categorization, the classification, everything will be there in the central database. And also a certificate of registration will be prescribed by the central government. Although it will be issued by the state government, once any vessel has the certificate of registration with the registrar of internal inland vessels, registrar of Inland vessels will have the registry, will provide the registry for the certificate of registration. Once any vessel is registered under that, then that vessel will not need to have a certain specific separate 
registration certificate from any other state that will be valid throughout. And the central database, as I told you, will have all the information about the vessel, the type of vessel, the classification, categorization of vessel, as well as the number of crew members present, also in which areas the vessel can operate. All this will be given in the database. And decentralized registration of all non-mechanized vessels will also be there at the taluka, at the village level as well. Also, it enlarges the definition of inland waters. It comprises of the inland waters in the terms of tidal waters and internal waters as well. So, they, as you can see, all these provisions are brought in place in order to bring a centralized system which provides a proper standard for every vessel to adhere to in order to have proper transparency as well as provide safety and security of the cargo and passengers. And it will also have the uh, key feature to have pollution control measures because the central government will be having the authority to provide a list of chemicals and any sort of sewerage that can be released into the waters and in what amount it is permissible. Okay, let's move on and talk about the objectives. As I have time and again told you that the first objective is to set a proper standard so that every vessel is safe and secure for the cargo and the passengers. And refined supervision. Refined supervision because of the registration of the vessels at the central as well as the decentralized, the village, panchayat, taluka level as well. It will be more refined in the sense safety, is, uh, safety will be there because all the vessels will be adhering to the safe designs, the protocols of the procedure, whatever there is in the central bank according, uh, central data bank according to the central government. Other than that, an SOS provision is also there. So in any distress, if any vessel is in a distress, then it will send an SOS and the nearest vessel, like in the International Maritime Corporation, will of course, it will adhere to that signal and it will reach the master of the ship, he or she will reach to help the vessel in distress. If he or she fails to do so, then a penalty of 10,000 rupees will be there. And capacity utilization, as I told you that many inland waterways are not under the ambit of, inland, in, uh, many inland waterways are not under the ambit of the Act of 1917. So 2021 has said that we will bring every Every inland waterways that is that has a capacity for the cargo and the freight and of course because of that less burden will be put on the roadways and railways. As I told you that it is environment friendly in the sense if we talk about the economy and the environment in tandem then a liter of fuel provides 25 ton kilometer for cargo to move through road then through railway. For one liter, it is 94 ton per kilometer. But if we talk about the waterways, it is 215 ton per kilometer. That means that it is environment friendly when it comes to the emission of greenhouse gases. And also, if we talk about the economy, as you can see, is there. Also, preventing mishaps and encouraging safe trade. Once any vessel has a design to look up to for its safety, it will adhere to it. If it doesn't, it will be penalized and that will have a prevention on any mishappening. Also, SOS is there. In case of accidents also, any accident if occurs, then the local police station will be, it will be involved. Also, the district magistrate will have a local probe in it. Then, curbing pollution because it is environmental friendly and a proper list of chemicals and substances will be designated by the central government to keep a check on it. And Building basic structure for the future development because there are certain advanced vessels which will be categorized as special vessels, special inland vessels. So for those vessels which have advanced technology, this is a big boost. Moving on, if we talk about the criticism, certain criticisms are there. First, because earlier the state governments were the authority to prescribe and issue the certificate of registration, but now it is in the hands of the government to prescribe but the issuance is on the state government. So first is that, that this has become too centralized. And also every state has different needs. 
in accordance to their in accordance to their own waterways so that is something that uh, centralization may not work in favor for then environmental subversion as we know that burden may be decreased in the roadways and the railways roadways but of course how can we forget that pollutants may and they will be of course if not properly checked they will be released at a rate it will start to pollute our water bodies as well and of course if passengers will be there as we can see they litter on the road they will also litter in the sea so aquatic life will be disturbed so in conclusion i just would like to tell you have a more balanced approach because in the conclusion we have to always try to be positive yes this is a step in the right direction because if we talk about the scenario of the global world it has proved that if we need to have a development in our freight structure then roadways railways and inland waterways everything needs to be developed accordingly so if we talk about the inland waterways they will also be in india in indian terms they will also be coupling with the dedicated east and west freight corridor so that is a step in the right direction to have a proper freight infrastructure and passenger infrastructure but environmental concerns should never be looked about because that uh, we have learned from this pandemic that the nature is of utmost importance along with economic development otherwise we will go 30 40 years back than we from where we started okay let's move on to our main spaced question discuss the key features of the inland vessel bill 2021 what are its objectives and criticisms so that's it for today tomorrow we shall meet again with another segment until then stay updated and thank you so much for watching